A recurring trend in writings on Bergman's early work is that it took the legendary filmmaker time to find his own voice. Frederick Gustafsson argues 1949's Thirst, Bergman's seventh feature, is quote, the first that feels uniquely his, specifically citing the film's visual style and tone as Bergman-esque. Reflecting on the film, Bergman saw Thirst as crucial to developing his own cinematic voice, claiming, Thirst does show a respectable cinematographic vitality. This video will explore Thirst's visual style, and specifically consider what cinematographer Gunnar Fischer brought to Igmar Bergman's work. Thirst was not the first collaboration between Fischer and Bergman. The two had worked together on Port of Call a year earlier, and Bergman had been developing certain visual hallmarks, like his penetrating close-ups, as early as Crisis. But with Thirst, Fischer helped push Bergman's visual storytelling to new heights. It isn't just that Fischer's cinematography is often quite simply beautiful to look at, but it also captures two key elements of Bergman's storytelling, visualizing interiority and creating discomfort on screen. First, let's talk interiority. Bergman's characters are usually grappling with intense and complicated emotions, which are hard to articulate, but Fischer is able to offer glimpses into these people, particularly through uninterrupted long takes, which simply observe the characters behaving. This shot of Ruth unable to sleep as her husband Bertel slumbers is a key example. Though not a word is said, Ruth's abrupt movements, observed without interruption, communicates not all is well for this couple. Moreover, the length of time spent with Ruth instead of Bertel emphasizes her frustration and conflicted feelings instead of her husband's. But despite her frustrations, Ruth does not confront Bertel. Instead, Ruth begins to pack a suitcase as her frustration mounts. But as Bertel begins to stir, Ruth abandons her packing, returning to putter around the room aimlessly before eventually slumping down in defeat. Without any dialogue, Fisher's camera captures a woman's conflicted feelings in her marriage and her inability to make a substantial change. Fisher's high contrast lighting is also crucial for communicating interiority, like in this scene, where a young Ruth is tormented by guilt for her affair with a married man, the overwhelming shadow externalizing her moral turmoil. This lighting style meshes with Fisher's contrast of foregrounds and backgrounds, with Ruth and Bertel's well-lit conflicts aboard a train contrasted against the ruins of post-war Germany in the darkened background. Similar to Port of Call, Thirst positions the central couple's angst in relation to societal problems, though in this case, purely through visual means. And that angst brings us to the second factor which makes Fisher such an ideal partner for Bergman. Bergman frequently deals in dread and discomfort, Emotions Fisher can render on screen with startling simplicity. A scene following Ruth's forced abortion is made greatly more uncomfortable by Fisher's refusal to show the nurse's face, his camera emphasizing Ruth's helplessness at the hands of inhuman, faceless figures. Or take this intimate two-shot, which starts as something of a loving moment for Ruth and Bertel, but slowly becomes bitter as both parties pick at the discontent of their marriage. Fisher holding in such an intimate two-shot in the context of this deeply anxious fight emphasizes the mutual alienation of both parties, with the lack of cutting enhancing the discomfort of the scene. This also re-emphasizes Fisher's skill for rendering interiority, with Fisher's resolve to hold this two-shot for as long as possible, mirroring Ruth and Bertel's stubborn personalities, which keep them locked in conflict. In addition to simply being gorgeous, Gunnar Fisher's cinematography greatly enhances Bergman's storytelling. This is especially crucial with Thirst, which on paper is not an especially good movie. The conflict at hand quickly grows repetitive, and Ruth is also far more fleshed out than her husband. Yet the visual storytelling is strong enough that the film largely works in spite of its narrative shortcomings. Through choices in camera movement, lighting, and composition, Fisher is able to visualize the interiority of Bergman's characters and amplify their own discomfort. This cinematographic vitality is the value of Gunnar Fisher, and evidently, Bergman agreed. The two would work together nine more times throughout the 1950s and in the process, would capture some of the most stunning imagery in art house cinema.